Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessings on you who are here today to worship and those who worship online as well. May the Lord richly bless you this morning so that you may be inspired and get connected with God, with one another, and with your best self. Today's altar flowers are given to the honor and glory of God by Kathy and Randall Griffin in honor of all who have fought for freedom. Amen. The announcements for this week. The Finance Committee will meet today at 4 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. The Staff Parish Relations Committee will meet today at 6 p.m. in the Ladies' Parlor. The Administrative Board will meet Monday, May 2nd, at 7 p.m. in the Family Life Center. The UMW General Meeting will be held Tuesday, May 3rd, at 6.30 in the Fellowship Hall. Preacher Juan will lead Bible Study Wednesday, May 4th, at 10 a.m. in the Sanctuary. The youth will meet Wednesday, May 4th, from 6 to 7.30 p.m. in the Family Life Center. The Chancer Choir will practice Wednesday, May 4th at 7 p.m. The Peacemakers Quilting Ministry will meet Thursday, May 5th from 1 to 3.30 p.m. There will be no Bible study Thursday, May 5th. Please see your bulletin for other upcoming events. Are there any other announcements that need shared this morning? I have to take my glasses off to see. No hands. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, if not, please stand as we recite our mission statement, which can be found on the front cover of your bulletin. The mission of the Irwin United Methodist Church is to love God, love one another, and make disciples for Jesus Christ by welcoming, worshiping, and witnessing. Please remain standing for the invocation. O oh Lord our God. Your glory is charted above, chanted above the heavens by the mouths of babes and infants. You have set up the the When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and stars, what are human beings that you are mindful of them? You have made them little less than God. O oh Lord our God, please remain standing if able as we sing our call to worship him number 389.
Please remain standing as we join together in our affirmation of faith. <coughs> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven. And sit on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I messed up, you can now turn and greet each other. And uh, may the peace of Christ be with you. Okay, now we will remain standing, if able, and we will sing our opening hymn, number 370, Victory in Jesus.
You may be seated. Come forward, please, for the time of a children's time. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing this morning? Yes, yes. And Brinkley and Lila and Spencer and uh, yeah and Ayana. Uh, yes. Uh, who is your who uh, who loves you most? Who is the person who encourages you, inspire you most? Brinkley, Ayana. Let's start with Ayana. Huh? Your grandma, that's right, your grandma. How about Brinkley, who, who, who gives you most encouragement, is, inspire you, who lift you up? Who does that? Huh? You are, who? Your mama, that's right. Your mama does that. Okay. How about uh, Lila? Who do you think? Your daddy. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Your dairy, Daryl. Is Spencer you wanted to say? Who, who is your most uh, encouraging person? I can tell your dad. <laughs> that's right. That's right. We'll talk about the Ten Commandment, the Sixth Commandment. Do you know what is that? Sixth Commandment is thou shall not. No, this is a, that is the first one. Second one. The first one is. Uh, thou shalt not murder and kill. Thou shalt not murder. That, that's why it's, it's like a, we can, we can, uh, we, I don't think nobody will kill anybody. But, but, do you know we can kill other people when we are not kind? When we discourage them? When we put them down? When you make a judgment against them? It's like, a, have you ever had a paper cut? Paper cut. Yeah, paper cut is, uh, you don't think it is a nothing, it's a paper, but when you have a paper cut, the uh, bread knows it, it, it hurts. It hurts. It does not last long, but it hurts, the paper cut. So when you say some unkind things to somebody, it's like a paper cut. It's like a getting paper cut. It hurts. So we need to kind and nice and gentle to other people. Okay? So let's have a prayer together. Good. Look at that. Wow, Spencer doing a good job. Aya and I and Lila look at you and Brinkley. Good. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for your giving us ten commandment and help us to be kind, gentle and welcoming, loving person. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good job. Good job. Yes. Let us... Yeah. As the children return to their seats or leave for Children's Church, we will sing our hymn of prayer, hymn number 431, Let There Be Peace on Earth.
Happy Sunday. Good morning to you, beautiful people, beautiful Christians. What a great joy to see you this morning. And uh, we have uh, several people uh, who came back after pandemic. And uh, I want to uh, recognize uh, Larry and Judy Smith. Could you stand up? Show us how beautiful and handsome you are. You cannot hide in the back. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome back. And we give thanks to you. Thank you. And, uh, 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 if, if you are first time to be here, can you raise your hands and you stand up or, or introduce yourself or you are the person who come? Uh, okay. Uh, and we have, a, uh, we have a, a celebration that we want to share together. And uh, uh, I hope this celebration, uh, uh, Susan Biley will make a, some announcement, special announcement today. Good morning. It seems only yesterday that um, Preacher Wan and Mi Young moved in on that hot July uh, day and took several months to find a couch, right, Mi Young? <laughs> we've heard about that couch. But um, we've, we've had a lot of celebrations and a lot of um, other types of situations, especially with COVID, that has been so challenging. And I can't say enough about how Preacher Wan and Mi Young have adapted um, not many people would get up and be in a parking lot at 5 o'clock to pray with someone because they couldn't go visit them. And those of us that have lost loved ones, he's been by our side. And we just appreciate him so much. And we appreciate Mi Young, not just her egg rolls. Um, <laughs> she has such a love for children. Um, it just glows in her, and we appreciate her. And I am pleased to announce that the bishop has um, reappointed um, Preacher Juan and Mi Young to be with us for another year. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Me and <laughs> Can you stand up and give him standing ovation? No. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> but it is a, I can tell you that it's a great joy to serve here. Great joy to serve you, and I will be here until the Lord uh, said, you need to go home, heaven. <laughs> That's right. So uh, thank you so much. Mia has been a great partner. This is a beautiful church. Uh, I believe we just started. We just started. After the pandemic is over, and now we're getting to know each other. Uh, I believe God will be with us, and God will lead us and make uh, this church grow in spirit and love. Uh, we have a, this morning we, we started uh, the young and middle-aged group Sunday school class. Uh, ten people showed up and we, we are grateful and thankful. And uh, Aiden Lakey is here. At the, he was at the hospital, UNC Chapel Hill Hospital. Raise your hands, Aiden. Do you want to stand up? Or? <laughs> <laughs> What a great young man. What a great young man. We are so thankful. We pray for you. Love you. Uh, do you have any other celebration that we want to share together this morning? I do. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Debbie? Uh, we have a new baby in our family. He was born on Monday to my nephew, Charles, and his lovely wife, Kate, and Ruth, Joseph, Lamari. And I'm a great aunt, and I'm just proud of it. And <laughs> he's, a, he's a blessing. He's just beautiful. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. That's uh, and we give thanks to God for the arrival of a new baby. How about Debbie Loring? Could you stand up and show us how beautiful you are? <laughs> so, you, you may not know this. Uh, no matter how good attendance we may have, if one person miss on Sunday morning, I miss that person. We miss that person. It's like a big puzzle, like a 500 puzzles. And they, if, if we miss one, one piece, we can see that where the one piece is. Because you are all one big family. We have uh, some people who did not come back yet. But uh, please, please give them a call, write a note, tell them how much we love them and miss them. That is a church, my friend. That's a church. We are one, one good church family, wherever you come from. 
whatever you do, male or female, rich or poor, we are all one family. Other a celebration that we, you want to see? Yes, uh -huh, Brenda? Good. Amen, amen. I mean, June Carpenter came back to a peacemakers uh, meeting. What a great joy. After she, she is fighting still with the cancer, but we give thanks to God. Uh, other celebration. Yes, go to you. Yeah, it's good. Good. So you had the great trip to to Williamsburg, and good, well, you behaved well. Good. <laughs> she went to church. Amen. Thank you so much. Other celebrations? Uh, uh -huh. Amen, amen. That's beautiful. Uh, celebrating class reunion. Beautiful, beautiful. Other celebrations? Prayer concerns. Um, uh, pray for Lee Parker, Caitlin, and uh, Justin Singler, uh, old patient of Bessie Johnson Hospital. Safe travels for my son, Chris West, and Isabella Gay, and all families making difficult decisions. Camel Davis, and pray for uh, Steve Vernon, Judy McCullen, and Ben Vernon, uh, Peggy Suggs, Eli Godwin, uh, Francis and Thomas Mitchell, and Hilda Howard, and Phil Farrell. Pat, uh, Pat Mibulo. Yes, thanks. Uh -huh. And all those suffering from mental illness, and Hazel McLam lymphoma, and Elizabeth uh, Skitt uh, brain surgery, and Kathy Baker COVID, and Dennis Hogg and liver needed. And pray for Dwight King. Uh, he had a good uh, test this past Friday, and he did have a more test going on. So remember uh, Dwight and his family in your prayers. Uh, Bill Holti, Maria Denny, uh, pray for uh, Bella, a family of Cleo Bledsoe, and Johnny Potter, surgery on Thursday, and Kay Wilson, all people who suffer from depression, and Ty Fowler Sr. Let's have a prayer together. Our most gracious and merciful God, we give thanks to you for your many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. You have blessed us more than we deserve. And you have given us more than we asked. You have forgiven our sins more than we confessed. And this all comes from you. This beautiful church of yours, we give thanks to you. And you have shed your blood for us who are unworthy. Oh God, forgive our sins. We pray for the people in Ukraine, for the peace in Ukraine. And people who wear uniforms in medical field. And people who suffer from depression. People who have to make difficult decisions this week and put people who are driving and, and we pray for them, Heavenly Father. We called out the names whom we love, whom we care. So God bless them. And now we pray as you taught us pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as you forgive those trespass against us and lead us not in temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen hear the good words good news christ died for us while we were yet sinners that proves god's love toward us in the name of jesus christ you are forgiven Can I have ushers come forward, please, for the time we give God's tidings and our best offering to Him.
Oh God, this is my song, and this is my story, and this gift is for you, O oh Lord. My heart, my love, my soul, and my best. Accept these gifts and consecrate them to save souls who do not know you, Jesus Christ, as their Lord and Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> Let us read uh, for the illumination, <coughs> prayer for illumination. I will read the light print and you'll read the bold print. Uh, let us pray for the illumination of the word of God. Today's Old Testament lesson comes from Exodus chapters, chapter 20, verse 13. You shall not murder. This ends our Old Testament lesson. We will now turn our attention to today's New Testament lesson found in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 25 through 32. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouth, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to all who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, which with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. This ends our New Testament lesson, if able. Please stand for the Gospel lesson. Today's Gospel lesson comes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 through 26. You have heard that it was said of those of ancient times, you shall not matter, murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you, if you are angry with a brother or a sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to counsel. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and sister, or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you've paid the last penny. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I've been preaching on the sermon series on Ten Commandment, and today's uh, Sixth Commandment. Sixth Commandment is Thou Shall Not Murder. Some translation is uh, thy sh Thou Shall Not Kill, but I prefer to uh, use Thou Shall Not Murder. Let's have a prayer together. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to thy sight, Lord, my God, my Redeemer. Amen. This commandment, sixth commandment, thou shalt not murder, it is the shortest commandment in terms of that sentence, but it is the most controversial commandment. Uh, people have all different interpretation about this. Uh, as you know, the uh, Supreme Court uh, verdict on, uh, uh, on abortion, uh, capital punishment, 
just war, uh, Roe and Wade, pro-life, pro-choice, all of this, it, it depends upon how to interpret this sixth commandment. Sometimes uh, we wonder whether this uh, is uh, any of use uh, in the life of church. Uh, there was a, uh, a three uh, religious leaders uh, talking about uh, when the life begin. Uh, it is a, 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 the Roman Catholic uh, priest and then a Jewish rabbi and Methodist preacher. They talked about how the life begin, when the life begin. Uh, the Roman Catholic priest says, a life begins at the time of conception. Uh, we, do not, we cannot tell when the life begins, when it is uh, exactly we do not know. So that's where life begins. Uh, Jewish rabbi says, uh, life begins at the time of birth. And we can tell when the baby comes out and it is a human being, and that's where we start uh, with this life begins. And Methodist preacher, he said, a life begins when the children left for college. <laughs> this sixth commandment, I want to tell, what does this, this does not mean three point. This does not mean this one. This commandment means this one. And what we can do, how this commandment make applicable to our daily life. The first one is, this commandment does not mean that we should be all vegetarians and vegans. No. God accepted the animal sacrifice of Abel. He accept, God accepted that. And Jesus fed 5,000 people with the five barley loaves and two fish. And Jesus ate the fish and he helped the people to catch the fish. <coughs> so it is okay, it is okay to eat uh, 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 meat, to uh, eat uh, uh, fish. Uh, I, I love uh, to eat uh, fried chicken and there's nothing wrong with that. And all the preachers love that. And ask Pastor Tim, he knows. And uh, we, uh, we also, I, I, love, I love steak uh, or prime rib and medium rare. There's a way that I love, the juicy, uh, that uh, this, this does not mean, this commandment, second, this commandment does not mean that we should not have any war. War is tragedy. Words should never be glorified or beautified for any reason. But uh, we can see that our nation soon will celebrate the Memorial Sunday. We pray and we give thanks to God for those who wear uniforms, who died in the line of duty. Uh, uh, this country was founded by starting war against the British to declare independence from them. We remember Pearl Harbor, how many people were killed. If United States did not take any action, we never know. We remember the September 11, how did it happen? This uh, jihad, the Taliban killed over 2,000 people. And we know that uh, during the World War II, Hitler, killed six million Jews. The dictator in Cambodia killed over five million people. And the Turkish people killed 1.2 million Armenians. Genocide. The Kim Jong-un and Kim Jong-il, they killed 100,000 people and made the children starving to death. It's a broken world. It's a broken world. This is uh, the world that we live in is not a perfect world. The evil is rampant. Evil is real. Just think about the Putin and the Russian armies invaded Ukraine and killing tens of thousands of people and destroying all the buildings. 
If anybody says it's okay as it is, absolutely is not. We, the people of God, do, do something to stop this evil. What does this commandment mean is this one. The first one is, life is holy. Life is holy, sacred, precious, valuable, priceless. Life belongs to God. Only God can take away our life and nobody can. In, in his suffering, Job says, it is God who give me life, it is God who will take a life. Naked I come, naked I will go. That's Job's confession. And Jesus says, what is the use of your life if you gain the whole world, yet if you lost your soul? Your life is that much important. Every moment that you have, even here now, your time, your moment, your uh, your days are so precious, so important. The, this, just think about this sixth commandment. The fourth commandment is, thou shalt keep Sabbath holy. Six days you shall work, but on seventh day, you and your children, your slaves, animals, take a rest. God wants to make you sure that these people, children who do not have much power, slaves, even the animals, take rest on that day to protect life. The fifth commandment is, thou shall honor your parents so that your days may be long in the land that I give to you. God wants to make sure that these people, the elderly people, that uh, the voiceless people, the weak, vulnerable people should be protected. And now, here in sixth commandment, Thou shall not murder. Do you know, do you know how much precious you are in the sight of God? I wish uh, we all know. Psalm 8 in our invocation says, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name on, on the earth. And when I look at the stars and moon, the, the works of your fingers, and who are we that you are so mindful of us so you are so careful for us you have made us just little lower than angels but you have a dominion of all things we are that much important and precious in the sight of God each one of you and Psalm 139 verse 14 says you are wonderfully and fearfully made so that's why I say whenever Sunday morning you show us how handsome you are, how beautiful you are. Whether you are young or old, male or female, rich or poor, educated or uneducated, handicapped, married, divorced, single, each one of you are so, so precious in the sight of God. Our famous Bible, God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, so that who say well, believers in him shall not perish but have eternal life. I wish everybody know and feel how much each one of us is precious and important in the sight of God. In the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, when there was a war, when there was a battle against enemies. When the, when the soldiers came back from battle, the God says, the first thing, whether, whether you win or lost, the first thing they do is they need to weep and mourn over the loss of their soldiers, over the loss of the, even the life of their enemies. We have many PTSD. Because, because we, we did something against, uh, against the humanity. And we know that I, I have one of my uh, children's uh, friends, Stephen, came from Afghanistan. 
When he came back, Myung and I went to, uh, went to uh, uh, Fulbright to welcome him. We were so concerned about him because he was in a front line of a battlefield in Afghanistan. We had a lunch with him and uh, he stayed at our home. And then after a few days later, and I asked him, Stephen, uh, can you tell me how you were in Afghanistan? He said, it was okay. Stephen, did you kill Taliban? He said, I did. Tell me how did you feel? He said, nothing. I felt nothing. Are you okay? I'm okay. He was not okay. He was not absolutely okay. I knew there's something going on to numb the pain in his, in his mind, in his soul. He took drugs, cocaine, and he collapsed. Boom. And he had a near-death experience. He, he was in a coma, totally ICU for four days, and he woke up. And later, he shared this story with us, with, with the youth. I was able to numb the pain of my mind by taking these drugs, but I could not numb the pain of my soul. Beautiful statement. Beautiful truth is right there. Because we are all in the image of God. Because we are so precious in the sight of God that uh, we need to weep and mourn when there is a when the, whenever there is a loss of life. So what can we do? What can we do? Uh, the last point. What can we do to honor and keep this commandment? I will say three things. The first one is, know that we are the mixture of good and evil. No matter how good you may be, I know you ought to be a good people, but we have a bad side. We have angels and demons in us. We have lions and lambs in us. We have a good side and bad side. We have a saint and sinners in us. People say, preacher one, you are so, so wonderful, great saint. Uh, please tell me, young. <laughs> please tell me, young. She knows me. She knows me. So we are vulnerable. We are vulnerable. Know your vulnerability. The second thing is, Know the root of your anger. Where this anger comes from. Many times, the root of anger comes from separation. Disconnection from God, from each other, and from your best self. That is a story of uh, Matthew, Summer on the Mount, if you are angry with your brother or sister, you'll be liable for judgment. If you insult your brother or sister, you will be liable for court. If you call your brother or sister stupid or fool, you'll be liable for the hell of fire. What that means is here this is like a it is your brother, not somebody, or your sister. When there's a separation from God, from each other, and from our best self, the root of anger comes from there because we are created for connection, getting connected with God, for intimacy, intimate relationship with God. That's who we are. What, how, how we, are, we are created in, in that way. The Putin, he invaded and his armies 
invaded Ukraine and killed tens of thousands of people, destroying everything. I can tell that he was separated from his cabinet. He separated from other fellow people and from the rest of the world, definitely from the people in Ukraine. Know the root of your anger. And the last one thing I want to say is, your anger, your bitterness, your, your resentment can be transformed or transmitted. We, are not, we don't live in a perfect world. So many some things, somehow, the bad things happen to you. I truly believe some of you may be abused by somebody, physically, emotionally, relationally, spiritually, financially, sexually, whatever. You have to deal with that. The pain will, the suffering still be there. If you transform that, your pain into, it will be, it will be, it will be transformed. You will be a wonderful, beautiful Christian. There's a, there's a story of the gospel, the story of the cross. What Jesus did on the cross is he transformed the bitterness, anger, the betrayal into his glory. That is the core of the gospel. If you don't transform your bitterness and anger, and it will be transmitted to people around you, especially to the closest one. The violence in your life can be transformed or transmitted. It's up to how we accept Christ, the one who suffered for our sins on the cross and transformed into glory. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let's stand up and join in singing Amazing Grace, hymn number 378.
I want to bless you this morning so you can open your hands and open your mind and your hearts. Let us pray. Our most gracious and merciful God, bless your servant, your disciples who gathered this morning to worship and honor and praise your holy name. Oh God, bless them and create in them a clean heart, pure heart, joyful heart, thankful heart, so that they can be a peacemakers wherever they go. Now the grace of God and the love of Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you here and now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.